Story 1 Beatrice and Clark, an adventurous couple from Melbourne, Australia, set out on a fishing trip for the weekend to an uninhabited lake in the Northern Territory. They were thrilled at the prospect of discovering uncharted wilderness and the rush of reeling in rare fish species for the first time in their lives. They had no idea that the fishing trip they were going on would turn out to be a defining moment in their lives. Beatrice and Clark were filled with excitement as they readied their fishing gear to cast their lines into the placid lake as the sun began to rise. They launched their small boat and began gliding across the tranquil waters, which exuded an inviting atmosphere. Eager to uncover the secrets of this hidden paradise, the couple couldn't contain their excitement to encounter the diverse array of animals living within it. They had no idea that a sly albino crocodile was hiding beneath the calm waters, waiting for its next meal. The locals call this elusive and dangerous beast Leviathan because it had evaded capture for so many years. Its ivory scales blended perfectly with the lake's sandy bottom, making it extremely difficult to spot. Beatrice and Clark cast their lines while concentrating on the thrill of the possibility of making a catch. They were both thrown off their feet when suddenly a powerful force rocked their boat, throwing them both off balance. Beatrice's leg was quickly engulfed by the monstrous jaws of the albino crocodile that had appeared out of nowhere. As the crocodile dragged her deeper into the water, her piercing screams of agony could be heard throughout the area. Clark, who was overcome with shock and adrenaline, responded immediately. He grabbed an oar nearby and began to pound the animal to free his beloved wife, who was being held captive. Beatrice's skin was pierced and her bones were broken as the crocodile's grip became increasingly tight. She was experiencing intolerable pain, but she had a strong will to live despite it. Beatrice mustered all her strength and fought back, tearing at the crocodile's eyes with her fingernails and hitting its snout with her fists. Her relentless determination unsettled the dangerous animal, causing it to momentarily release its grip on its prey. Seizing the opportunity, Clark dragged his wife onto the boat while she was still writhing in pain and bleeding heavily from the injured leg. The desperate nature of their fight attracted the attention of nearby fishermen, who immediately came to their assistance. They called the authorities and administered first aid immediately after the incident. Despite the excruciating pain, Beatrice remained conscious and clung to the possibility of a positive outcome. The strength of her resolve was an inspiration to everyone around her. After the news of the attack by the albino crocodile quickly spread throughout the area, a group of skilled crocodile hunters were dispatched to the area under the direction of the well-known wildlife expert, Dr. Olivia Robinson, to capture the dangerous animal. They searched the lake thoroughly armed with tranquilizers and specialized equipment with the intention of bringing the crocodile responsible for the crime to justice. As the days turned into weeks, the hunters continued their pursuit of their objective. After a tense and exciting showdown, they found the albino crocodile in a remote part of the lake. They rendered the beast immobile by putting it to sleep, requiring expert precision. The once evasive Leviathan had finally been brought into view. Beatrice and Clark both felt a sense of relief when they heard the news of the successful capture. Beatrice's unbreakable spirit remained unbroken, even though she had been injured. She had to undergo several surgeries and a rigorous rehabilitation program for her wounds to heal. She pulled strength, love, and support from her husband, family, and friends throughout her recovery process. Beatrice's physical strength gradually returned enabling her to undergo the necessary rehabilitation so she could walk again with the aid of a prosthetic leg. Her tenacity served as an example to others, and she eventually became a metaphor for prevailing over adversity. The community came together to support her, holding fundraisers to help pay for her ongoing medical expenses, and sharing her story as an example of the bravery that can be found in people. The albino crocodile, on the other hand, found a new home in a wildlife sanctuary where it will be observed and studied in the future. As a result of its capture, valuable insights into the behavior of these elusive creatures were gained, 
which contributed to the advancement of scientific research and the protection of Australia's distinctive animal life. The fishing trip Beatrice and Clark had planned turned into a harrowing ordeal. However, their unwavering love for one another and determination enabled them to triumphantly overcome their challenges. They decided to start a new chapter in their lives together, and they will be eternally grateful to the community for their unwavering support and the miraculous fact that they survived. Story 2 There once was a picturesque lake in Australia's vast sun-soaked land, tucked deep within its untamed wilderness. The lake was surrounded by lush greenery and towering eucalyptus trees creating a picture-perfect scene. From this location, Pastor Isaias, a godly man who exuded humility and devotion, embarked on his journey to baptize 10 people looking for spiritual solace. During the time that Pastor Isaias was getting ready for the sacred ceremony, the rising sun painted the sky with a golden hue. He was carrying a wooden cross with him as he made his way toward the peaceful shores of the lake, dressed in the white robes that were his trademark. As the ten people, full of faith and hope, waited for their moment of rebirth, the atmosphere buzzed with excitement and anticipation. When the first person entered the water, a ripple was sent through the lake's surface, which served as a warning sign of the imminent danger hiding beneath the surface. The congregation was unaware that a massive crocodile had silently made its way toward the shallows, drawn by the commotion and the promise of an easy meal. The calm atmosphere was shattered just as Pastor Isaiah recited the holy verses. The crocodile exploded out of the water like a bolt of lightning and pounced on the pastor's leg, snarling its powerful jaws as it did so. The congregation's joyful celebration turned into screams of terror, filling the air with gasps of horror as the event unfolded. The ferocious reptile flailed its powerful tail and dragged the helpless pastor deeper into the water as it continued to attack. However, although he was in an extremely precarious situation, Pastor Isaiah clung strongly to his faith. He continued to pray with every ounce of strength, his voice a testament to unyielding hope even though his body began to fail him. The ten individuals who had come to be baptized were rendered helpless by shock and fear as they watched the brutal attack unfold before their eyes. They had come to be baptized. However, as the voice of Pastor Isaiah reached their ears, the unyielding faith that he possessed resounded deep within their souls, which awoke their courage. The congregation members quickly sprang into action after calling upon their combined strength. They connected themselves to a chain of people and reached their arms out toward the pastor, intent on rescuing him. Their hold became increasingly firm, and they maintained an unwavering determination throughout the ordeal. The congregation was able to free the pastor from the grasp of the tenacious crocodile, thanks to their dogged persistence and unyielding determination. But the victory did not come without a price, as Pastor Isaiah was left with serious wounds, and his body was beaten and broken. The ten individuals supposed to be baptized by their spiritual leader displayed an overpowering outpouring of love and gratitude as they gathered around him after he was injured. They realized that their newly discovered faith had not only led them to this holy lake, but also brought them together in a bond greater than the sum of their individual travels. The story of Pastor Isaiah and the ten individuals he had baptized reverberated throughout the land as the news of the terrifying incident spread. Their bravery and commitment became a source of motivation for people all over the world, serving to remind others of the transformative power of faith and the tenacity of the human spirit. Together they set out on a path toward healing, which would benefit not only Pastor Isaiah, but the entire community. They lifted each other up through the recitation of countless prayers and the performance of countless acts of kindness, which provided solace and strength in the face of adversity. The scars on Pastor Isaiah's body began to heal after several months, a testament to the physical and spiritual resilience he had embodied throughout his life. The congregation continued to meet by the lake, where their faith had been tried and strengthened throughout their shared experience even though it had irrevocably altered them. 
It was only a matter of time before the remarkable story of Pastor Isaiah and the ten individuals he had baptized disappeared from the headlines. Still, its impact will forever be etched in the hearts and minds of those who had the opportunity to witness it. It served as a constant reminder that the light of faith and unity and triumph, illuminating the path to healing and hope even in the face of darkness. Story 3 Catherine lived in the heart of Australia, a teenager full of life and always up for an adventure. Since she was a child, she had a profound appreciation for nature, and she had never stopped looking for exciting new experiences amidst the breathtaking scenery that has always surrounded her. Her soul yearned for the unexplored lands and the mysteries that awaited her beyond the known world. Catherine made the decision to go investigate a lake in the area that was well known for its mesmerizing beauty on a bright and cheerful morning. She was driven by an insatiable curiosity. The sun's rays cast golden reflections onto the water's surface, giving the impression that it was inviting her to dive into its depths. Giddy with excitement, she stepped onto the bank, oblivious to the threats hiding just below the water's surface. Catherine's senses became heightened as she inched closer and closer to the edge of the water. She was startled by the eerie silence and a peculiar stillness in the air, both of which caused her to pause. She retreated involuntarily, but it was too late to do anything. Crocodiles are among the oldest known predators, and unbeknownst to her, they were hiding nearby, perfecting the art of camouflage so they could blend in with the surrounding vegetation. The sudden and forceful impact of Catherine's foot landing on the massive reptile triggered a cascade of chaotic events. The unexpected intrusion startled the crocodile, and it felt threatened by it, so it lunged at the teenager who wasn't expecting it. Its jaws closed violently on her leg, inflicting excruciating pain as sharp teeth pierced her flesh and dug deeper into the muscle tissue. The world for Catherine had become a haze of agony and panic instantly. While Catherine desperately tried to pull herself away from the crocodile's jaws to escape, she kicked the crocodile with the other leg she had free. The crocodile, acting extremely hostile at the moment, thrashed around in the lake, which caused Catherine's body to also thrash in the water. She was experiencing excruciating pain throughout her body as she sensed that her legs were about to be torn in two at any moment now. Catherine's survival instincts kicked in as she fought desperately against the overwhelming force of the crocodile's bite. She screamed for assistance, and her voice echoed throughout the tranquility of the surrounding environment. Her screams of agony were overheard by a nearby family who was taking it easy by the lake when they happened upon her plight and rushed to her aid. This was an incredible stroke of luck. The family, who was familiar with the risks that were present in the area, responded promptly and decisively. The father, a burly man with weathered hands and a kind heart, was aware of the critical nature of the situation and the need to act quickly. After seizing a sturdy branch lying nearby, he delivered a series of powerful blows to the crocodile's head, ultimately resulting in the reptile releasing its hold on Catherine's leg. After delivering the killing blow, the crocodile quickly disappeared into the lake's murky depths, but not before leaving a trail of blood in its wake. Catherine's pain worsened as the adrenaline began to wear off. She experienced feelings of weakness and lightheadedness, and her vision became blurry. The family did not waste a second and quickly fashioned an improvised stretcher out of branches and clothing, then carefully transferred Catherine onto it. While her children assisted in carrying Catherine to their nearby vehicle, the mother, a nurturing figure with a soothing voice, offered words of comfort. In frantic haste, the family hurriedly drove her to the closest hospital, where a group of highly trained medical professionals awaited her arrival. They labored diligently to bring her condition under control, tending to her wounds with the utmost precision and attention to detail. Even though the injuries to the body were significant, None of the vital organs appeared to have been damaged, which was a miracle. Catherine knew that her road to recovery would be long, 
But despite this, she was overflowing with gratitude toward the family for coming to her aid. The days eventually turned into weeks, and the weeks eventually became months. Catherine endured several painful surgeries and strenuous rehabilitation, all the while dealing with pain and experiencing setbacks. Throughout the challenging journey that she had to endure, her family never left her side, continually providing support and encouragement. Catherine's spirit was comforted by their presence, which reminded her of the generosity and altruism that existed in the world. The wounds that Catherine sustained healed over time, but she was left with faint scars that served as a constant reminder of her terrifying experience. Despite this, she was adamant not to give in to her fears. Instead, she allowed the experience to transform her into someone with a profound appreciation for life and a renewed determination to safeguard the natural wonders she held in such high regard. Catherine embarked on a mission to raise awareness about wildlife conservation and promote responsible exploration after being inspired by the resiliency she witnessed within herself and the compassion shown by the family. She went to great lengths in the hope that others would learn from her mistakes and avoid the perils she had to contend with. People had their hearts moved by Catherine's story because of how far and wide it spread. Her bravery and resiliency served as a beacon of hope, inspiring others to face their fears head on and embrace the beauty of nature while respecting its power. From that fateful day onward, Catherine's journey became intertwined with a greater purpose, transforming her from a survivor into a guardian of the wild. Story 4 Dalton had always been an adventurous soul. With a deep love for nature and a thirst for new experiences, he embarked on a journey to Zambia, a land renowned for its breathtaking landscapes and thrilling wildlife encounters. His main goal was to kayak the mighty Zambezi River, a dream he had nurtured for years. Little did he know that this adventure would test his courage and resilience in ways he could never have imagined. As Dalton arrived in Zambia, he was greeted by the warm hospitality of the locals. He was introduced to his guide, Kaumba, a seasoned adventurer who knew the Zambezi like the back of his hand. Together they set off on their kayaking expedition, eagerly anticipating the wonders that awaited them. The Zambezi River was awe-inspiring, its powerful currents carving through the lush African landscape. Dalton marveled at the diverse wildlife along the riverbanks. Elephants, hippos, and a myriad of exotic birds. The adrenaline coursed through his veins as he navigated the rapids, skillfully maneuvering his kayak under Kaumba's watchful eye. On a sunny afternoon, as Dalton and Kaumba glided along the river's surface, their kayaks cutting through the water, a sudden commotion caught their attention. A crocodile lurking beneath the surface had sensed their presence and surged towards them with alarming speed. In an instant, chaos erupted as the immense creature rammed into their kayak, causing Dalton to be thrown forcefully into the river. Time seemed to slow down as Dalton immersed himself in the cold embrace of the Zambezi. Fear gripped his heart as he struggled to resurface, his limbs thrashing in the water. His mind raced torn between the instinct to fight for survival and the overwhelming pain surging through his body. Kaumba, the ever-vigilant guide, reacted swiftly, realizing Dalton's imminent danger. He steered his kayak toward the distressed tourist, fighting against the tumultuous currents. With Herculean effort, he managed to reach Dalton, grabbing him just as the crocodile lunged for another attack. The crocodile's powerful jaws snapped shut, narrowly missing Dalton's legs. In that terrifying moment, Dalton's life flashed before his eyes. He could feel the brute force of the crocodile's jaws clenching inches away, a chilling reminder of his peril. It was a miraculous stroke of luck that he escaped with his life, but not without severe injuries. Together, Kawumba and Dalton clung to the kayak, their adrenaline-fueled escape continuing downstream. The sound of the crocodile's growls faded in the distance as they put as much distance between them and the dangerous predator as possible. 
It was only then that the gravity of Dalton's injuries became apparent. Blood stained the water around him as Dalton groaned in pain. Kaumba, a beacon of calm amidst the chaos, skillfully maneuvered the kayak to the riverbank, where he began administering first aid to the wounded tourist. With his knowledge of the local flora and fauna, Kaumba fashioned makeshift bandages from leaves and vines, expertly tending to Dalton's wounds. News of the terrifying crocodile attack spread quickly, reaching the ears of local authorities. A rescue team was dispatched, and Dalton was transported to a nearby medical facility. The road to recovery was long and arduous, marked by numerous surgeries and extensive rehabilitation. Yet Dalton's spirit remained unbroken. Months passed, and Dalton emerged from the harrowing ordeal stronger than ever. He bore the scars of the attack as a testament to his resilience and the indomitable spirit of the human soul. Though his physical wounds had healed, the memory of that fateful day would forever be etched in his mind. Dalton's story spread far and wide, capturing the hearts of many who marveled at his bravery. He became an inspiration, a living testament to the triumph of the human spirit in the face of adversity. His adventure in Zambia had transformed him, reminding him of the preciousness of life and the inherent risks hidden in nature's embrace. And so Dalton continued his travels, seeking new adventures, albeit with a newfound respect for the untamed wilderness. He carried the lessons he learned from Zambia close to his heart, forever grateful for the opportunity to survive, grow, and share his remarkable tale with the world.